Expo. All right, here we go. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. I've done I nothing. I think a bunch of my code deleted itself. Did you not save it correctly, or did you not no, open I up the right file? I ran it multiple times. Okay. Well, that might just not be in this right wait, save spot. I only have the, the window and the shell, and I don't know where mine is. Open it here. Just go to File, Open Recent. So File and Recent Files, it should be there. All right. So first thing we got to do is we have to add random. Because when the Badgers hit us, we're going to <clears throat> lose a random amount of health from 5 points to like 20 points. But I don't think we're going to do that today. Right now we're just doing the arrows. <clears throat> so, as we scroll down, Wait, what arrows? the arrows that we shoot to protect our house. Oh. Our castles with our bunnies and our carrots. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do accuracy, ACC, equals a list, 0, 0. You could do this with two different values. You could do shots hit or shots fired and shots hit. We're just going to do it in one um, in one list. And then we're also going to do arrows Actually, equals a, a blank list. Keep it with arrows. Now what this is, is every time we click, we are going to create um, an X, Y, and a theta. Right, so we have X, Y for our badgers as they move, X, Y for our character as they move, and then for our arrows, we're going to have an X, Y, and theta. What does theta mean? That's just the angle. So the angle of movement will tell will change the X and Y. Or, no, the angle of movement is used by Pygame.transform, I think, to rotate the arrow a certain amount. Because otherwise... When you click, you will have an arrow that no matter which way it's traveling will will be horizontal. So it'll be traveling across the screen like this as opposed to like that. Or it'll be going straight down like that instead of like that. Very technical. Is this still like, like bullet drop? No, so what it, it would, so if you shot looking this way, your arrow would fly looking like this. Oh yeah, oh okay. We want it to look like that, moving that way. Yeah. Or if you shot it straight down, it would look like this. And we don't want that, we want it to draw, we want it to look like that. Same. So, so we got our arrows and accuracy. Then this is gonna save us time, well, bad timer. Okay, we're actually gonna, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go straight to the arrows. So we're gonna do the same thing with our arrows as we've done with all of our other images. We're gonna copy this line, paste it, and instead of castle, name it arrow. And the image is um, bullet. So be careful, it's not arrow, you'll get an error. It's bullet. Why? Because that's just the name of the file. Mm. It's actually a cost of bullet. I mean, if you want to be technical, yes. Well, how do we know that? It's, a it's not a cross of bullet. That's right. If you look in top down, a bow would be basically. It, it, yeah. It, cross, yeah. He's got it. All right. So, what we're going to do, so we're going to scroll down and. I'll fix that later. So we're going to go down to just under what we wrote yesterday. Set player position and rotation. This is going to be number 6.2. Draw arrows. Again, so what we got to do. Oh, we want to do four bullet and arrows. So this is for every bullet that we shoot that goes in, that we append to our arrows list. We don't append anything to our list until we actually click the button, until we click our mouse button. That's going to be done um, down here. But for now, we are just up here. So for every bullet in arrows, we got to start one index. Index is zero.
is we're gonna keep track. Every time we shoot, we're gonna go through and look at every arrow and where it is in relation to the player. And if that specific arrow index, say index four, hits a badger, we need index four arrow to disappear. If you don't have this index, you won't, uh, you actually get index out of range. So we're gonna do velocity x equals math dot cosine bullet zero times 10. So this right here, the 10 is the speed of the arrow. So you base it, we're, and then we're gonna do the same thing with, oops. We're gonna go velocity y, sine bullet zero. So math.cosine bullet is going to be, oops, so this is currently this, this right here, so instead of it being x, y, theta, it's theta, x, y. I just, I've mixed up the order. So this is going to create the speed at which it moves through. So once we've gotten this angle right here, once we've gotten this theta, um, our bullet is going to be a theta x y and whatever this angle is, say it's 30 degrees, we're going to find cosine of 30. Does anyone know what that is? It's like pi over I don't know what cosine is. <laughs> the units are, I don't know. Unit circle. What is sine of 30? Answer is one slash two. Same. Sine of thirty. So this is one half. What is cosine of thirty? The answer is approximately zero point eight six six zero two five. So point five. So this is going to move times ten. This is going to move 8.6 pixels, 8.66 pixels, and 5 pixels. Sine of 30 is, so this is y and this is x. So this is going to move, which makes, which actually makes a lot of sense. Is that, that's totally not 30 degrees. But it's going to move in the x direction more than it is in the y direction. So 30 would be uh, something like this, right? You would expect an arrow, if, it, if the dude is looking that way, does that make, does this make sense? What? Mathematically, geome geometrically? How about it algebraically? Algebraically, depending on this number, right? So 30 degrees is our character. Let's say he's in the middle. If he's shooting 30 degrees, the arrow is going to move like this. And it's going to move more in the x direction than it does in the y direction. Because the right here, y. So do you guys see that it moves further in the x direction than the y direction? But what happens if he's shooting straight down? So if he's shooting straight down this way, it's just gonna go straight it's going the change of x is going to equal zero. So this is going to equal zero, and this is going to equal one probably, if I had to guess. But it's going to go straight down because the cosine of ninety.
What is cosine of 90? Um, zero. <clears throat> cosine of 90 is zero. Cosine of 90 is zero? What's sine of 90? One. Do you know that or are you just guessing? Okay. Okay. Oh, did I totally correct? Can you check tomorrow? Yeah. Because I threw that surprisingly well. Um, so that's how that's what those two lines do. So if you want your bullet to move faster, you change ten to twenty and it will move you know twice as fast. Twenty pixels per cycle. And it's about my computer probably does thirty cycles a second. Your guys might do twenty. So now that we got that, <clears throat> ten is the speed of the arrow, and you do want these numbers here. You want the ten to be the same, because otherwise it will. Even if you're going, just make those the same. If you want to experiment what it looks like, if you change them, you can. But for your actual game, you're probably definitely going to want them to be the same. Uh, so then we're going to do bullet one plus equal velocity x, bullet two plus equal velocity y. What is that doing? You guys remember what plus equal is? A running total. So if I start here, so if I start in the middle, so let's say I'm at 300, 300, it's going to add zero and one or times 10 was 8.6 and five. So it's going to add it, so 300 and 300, it's then gonna be the position of the arrow is going to be 300 plus five, 300 plus 8.6 for one cycle. And then the next cycle is gonna be 305 plus five, 308.6 plus 8.6. And it's just going to keep doing that until it's off the screen. Does that make sense? So we're adding it. We're adding to the location of the of the arrow, changing that mathematically. And then what we'll do is we'll blit an arrow at every location in the list where there should be an arrow. Okay. What does blit mean again? Blit puts an image on screen. Okay. And then update pygamedisplay.flip makes you see it. It's like, so blitting is putting things in place in a dark room. Update is turning the lights on. So now that we've done that, we, if, we don't want to keep track of the bullet once it's gone off screen, right? Because then after 10 seconds of shooting, you're going to have a thousand arrows you got to keep track of and that will really slow down your computer. So now what we're going to do is because we're checking every bullet that's in the arrow list, right? So every time we click, we're adding a bullet to our arrows list. We just got to do if that bullet is less than negative 64. So if the bullet's X direction or the bullet, oops, bullet X direction is greater than 640, or, oh, not greater than 640, or bullet two is less than negative 64, or uh, you guys don't hit enter, I just said that so you guys can see. Or bullet, um, you want one, one, two, two, is greater than 480. So what this is doing is we are checking to see if the bullet goes, so the width of our screen is what? 640, and what's the length of our screen? 480. So what we're saying is if the bullet, the X position is greater than 640, we're gonna delete it. 
So once it's off screen, get rid of it. If it's off screen to the uh, to the right, that's our 640. So if bullet one is greater than 640, that is going off here. What you could put is width as well. So instead of putting 640 for hard coding it, you could go width, and then you can only have to change then instead of coming down here, if you make your screen a little bigger, all you have to do is change this number as opposed to changing that number and then scrolling down and trying to find where you did that. This negative 64, that is the width of the bullet. So if the bullet is all the way out here, delete it, but don't delete it if it's like this. Make sense? Blake, making sense? Yeah. Okay. This is just setting the boundaries for the game. We don't, anything past that, get rid of it. We don't want to have to deal with it. Everyone tracking with me? Yes, no, maybe so. Bradley, is that a question? No? You sound, you sound sick. Are you okay? Oh, that sucks, bud. I'm sorry. Um... So yeah, so again, you could make to hard code everything. Instead of hard coding it, you could make this the negative value of bullet dot, I think it's get width. Uh, grass dot get, bullet dot get width. You can do that, you don't have to. Um, but if when you're making your game, you have a bigger uh, image, and once and it's deleting before it gets off screen, you'll need to come in and change this. So let's go to the end of this and then enter. We're gonna do bullet. I'm sorry, not bullet. Arrows dot pop index. Now who remembers what pop does? I don't. Yes. It removes that tip um Actually, I don't think it prints it. It just it deletes something. It deletes this index with a list. And then we're going to do index plus equal one. So that we're going to move on to the next arrow. So everything in this game is a list of things and we check it off to see if it's still in play. That makes no sense, Zach. It, we check and see each and every arrow if it is off the screen, and we'll eventually check and see if it's hitting a, a badger. Right now, we're just checking to see if it's off the screen, and for every arrow, we're moving it along the screen. And then we're going to go for projectile in arrows. So we're going through the list of arrows twice. So we have one list that we have one, we're going through it once up here. And then for every bullet, we are also going through every bullet. A little weird. I'll explain why. For bullet and arrows, arrow one equals, this is pygame.transform.rotate. So we did the same thing with our character up here, exactly. right? With our pi game dot transform dot rotate, we're doing the same thing just with our arrow. So we're going to rotate it the same amount that our character has been rotated by the same angle. So arrow one, this is just the new image of the arrow. You guys didn't think there was going to be this much code or this much math, did you? I didn't think it was going to be I think I 
I think it's more building a video game is really hard as opposed to pie game. Yeah, I think pie game. You should make a movie. It just goes into like a Adobe animation at like the last second. All right, does everyone have this line? Sorry, Adobe animation. And then screen dot blit. We're just gonna put the arrow on screen. What? Which arrow are we gonna put on screen? The special arrow one. Arrow one. And where is it going to be located? The screen. Oops, hang on. That's the incorrect. Seven. What's the XY coordinate? One. Incorrect. Ooh, excuse me. Bullet one, bullet two. You're close. You're about halfway there. Bullet two, bullet one. No. Bullet one. Nope. Yeah, nope. Three, bullet four. Nope. Bullet, bullet. Now you're now you're way off. Now it's not bullet anything. Bullet. <laughs> that was, that's pretty funny. That was good. What? Come on, Blake. See, I was about to say that. You should have. But it didn't cross my mind. <laughs> Alright, so. This is our badgers. We're gonna do our badgers later. Are we done? No. Now we just need to do. We need to add what happens when we click, and then what'll happen is every time we click, you'll see an arrow fly across the screen. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll all the way down to our our if event type dot types. So we need to make a new if event dot type, and make sure it's even with all the other ones. So again, this is even with this event. And that's even with this one, that's even with that one. Wait, where is I'm at the bottom. Wait, I don't even have a player. You should. It's the very last thing in your code. Does your character move around the screen? Yeah. Then scroll all the way down to your bottom of your code. Okay. Wait, what is wait, what is it equal? I'm waiting till everyone to get there. So it's wait, hurry up. Oh. So if the event dot type equal equal pi game dot mouse button down. Uh, you could do well because that's a key. You would do a key and then throw it up here. That's just how it works. So now what what do we need to do in order for the in order for the arrow to move from the player position to the mouse position. We need to create position is pi game dot mouse dot get position. So we need to find out where the mouse is on the screen. We do. And that's for the character to move. Because we don't want so we always want the care. We always want to know where the mouse is in order to move the player. We don't always want to know where the mouse is to shoot because we're not always going to be shooting. So this is only when we click does it get the mouse position again and then relay that information. So, what does that equal? What does that mean, Blake? A no. Why? In relation to our game, what does EC, ACC bracket 1 plus equal 1 mean? I think that answer already. Um, it's a running total. I know that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what ACC is. No, no. So if it's, well, it's only happening when the mouse is pushed down. What are we doing when we push the mouse button? We're shooting. Right. So if every time we click, what are we keeping track of? How many bullets are oh so it's adding bullets to the list. Yeah, so we're figuring out how many bullets we fired. Okay. And then we'll have when we hit something, it'll be ACC zero plus equal one. All right. And then at the end we we can calculate accuracy. Alright, this is gonna be a long one, guys. Oh.
arrows dot append. So what are we doing? We're adding something to the list. Correct. Wait, how do you spell append? Exactly how it sounds. We're adding a list to a list. So that's it just puts another list inside that list. Math.atan2. And then we want. Oh, I see. Oh, well. I don't. I lied. Okay. Yeah, I lied. This is. Very similar to what we did uh, very similar to what we did with um, our character oops what we did up here with our guy right we're using arc tangent again I can't remember 100% how arc tangent works but so once we have position zero one minus player position one plus 32 and then we do position bracket zero minus Wait, what? oh I forgot spaces player position one Nope, I'm sorry, player position zero plus twenty-six. I've I've had it. It'd be really funny if you did it Oh, actually I can't remember, have I? I heard that. It's actually pretty funny. Uh, you guys. I don't know what you're doing anymore. Who am I kidding? I haven't known what you're doing since the beginning. This is the. You guys don't need to have the backslashes and enters. I have that so you can see it. So, so let's say we've shot our arrow twice. We've clicked one, two. And our character is still at 100, 100, and our mouse is at 600, 700. What that is doing, so we are adding, oh, okay, we may just shoot one arrow. So this is position one. Position one is our mouse, so that's gonna be 700. This is a tangent of 700. Minus the player position of one plus thirty-two, so that's one thirty-two of position zero. Did I mess up a parentheses? Actually, I think it did. Yep. There should be two parentheses right here. I knew you did something wrong, but it didn't like highlight it when I put my last parentheses. And that's how you know. Yep. Um, so arc tangent of seven is uh, a comma, and this is position zero six hundred minus uh, plus twenty six. Wait, why did you put two after? Why did I put two after what? It's because I'm doing arc tangent. Arc tangent here needs two positions. It needs two numbers. So the first number is right here. So our tangent, this is the first number, Bradley, and then this is the second number. Okay, let's see if you can this. That, well, look at this parentheses, Bradley, when I, you see how it highlighted everything until our, it highlighted all of this? Uh, 
Did you were you watching the screen? Okay, I'm gonna do it once more. So that means this, all of this is part of arctangent. Oh. So we are adding, we're adding. We are adding a list of three things. We are adding a list of uh, player position. No, hang on. Let me just finish this. Minus. All right. So stop. Stop. Uh, so this is giving us arc tangent of I don't even know five sixty eight and four. Arc inside not called arc tangent. Bradley, please stop talking. Everyone, just stop talking and pay attention. Otherwise, I'll let you guys just flounder. Not teach us any of this. Everything I've taught you, short of. No, you can figure out everything else, I think, for the rest of the game. So I could go, build, I show you my game and go, build that. Good luck, you have three weeks. <laughs> or, I mean, you guys can pay attention, not talk, and interact with me. Because if, if I ask a question and I don't get any response, I feel like you guys aren't paying attention or following along. Yeah. So. And if you don't get it, either ask me a question. Yes, Bradley? Can that player still be able to move? Yes. <laughs> So, this is giving us arc tangent. So, this is going to equal some angle. I don't know what. Actually, that's the sign for zero. So, it's going to give us some theta. So, our list of arrows is going to equal a theta, a player position, a starting position. Right? Wherever this player is, we're going to add 32 down and 32 across. So it looks like it's coming right from his crossbow and not from his forehead. So these numbers right here, this plus 32, these two plus 32s, will change depending on the size of your image if you want to come from a certain spot of your image. Bradley. Currently, if I click, nothing comes out. Because like, uh, we haven't finished. It, it, just, just, just wait. So this is going to give us uh, 100, 132, 132. So this is going to be the starting point of this arrow. As we move, as our character moves across the screen, our starting point is going to be the middle or the crossbow area of his picture. Does that make sense? That's what the plus 32 does. Then, if we click again, we're going to have a bracket theta 1. Let's say he's moved, well, we'll just start, 132, 132. Then we're going to have a second one, which is theta 2, and we'll say 140 and 140. This is the starting point of our second one. For every list, so for every element, these are two arrows, so this is arrow one and arrow two. For arrow one, we're gonna go back and do all of this. We're going to give it its speed, we're gonna move it across the screen, we're going to um, make sure it's still within the bounds of our game. We are going to, then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it's still blitted correctly. So this entire game is just lists of information and using these bits of information to put a picture at a certain place of the screen. And I could show you how that works. Actually, that's a, a good point, Zach. I'll show you how to do it. I'll show you how that works. So now, oh, it's fine. I'm not going crazy. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Right. 
All right, so I believe that is all the code that we require for the game to work. So let's see what happens. It, your trackpad will work. So this is what you should have. Then we will fight in the shade. No, you can't push and hold. But if you have a scrolly wheel, that counts. Or right click. So Wait, if it's. If you have a scroll wheel, it just scoots. <laughs> but you guys see how the game slows down because it's keeping track of, you know, the hundred arrows I just shot. Whereas. <laughs> what did you just case? add? I mean, the code we just wrote. Yeah, but I have that and it doesn't work. Are you getting an error? <laughs> What's your error? Position zero minus player, player position zero plus one six. High beam down surface object is not callable. So you have uh oh. I can just throw when I click. I think you if it's not callable, you have an extra one a a set of parentheses. I can froze when I click. We have an error. What's your error? Alright, well I'm going to stop the video because that's all we're gonna, we have time for today. There is the video if you want to take a look at the, screw, at the board. Beautiful math. You can pause it if you have questions. Otherwise, see you tomorrow in class.